about their style of leadership is that it has been a whole te team approach and it has been one consistent message. And even if they don't know the answer, they haven't tried to blag their way out of it like maybe some other leaders have done. Um, they've said that we don't know the answer. Uh, we are evaluating this daily, but acting on best advice. And that's the kind of leadership that I ask you to do is to be honest, to be humble, to be truthful, but also reassuring. So through the presentation, I'm going to talk you through my five miles model and put it into context of that change. So to start off with, we're going to be looking at the, the my present stage. So in terms of my present, it's about trying to understand where you are right now. So even in a business context, it's really important for you to understand right, what's going on in my business, uh, what, what are my key focus, my key priorities. But for this presentation, in terms of personal leadership, I want you to start thinking about where you are right now, you know, uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, what your priorities are. Um, because know that you will be on the change cycle somewhere. So your feelings, your thoughts, your actions, and your behaviors are all gonna be influenced by where you are on that cycle. And your communication at, or lack of will be influenced also by your thoughts, your feelings, and your, your behaviors. Now in that initial stress mode of complete chaos and panic and fear, um, humans naturally go into the me, me, me mindset. And that's about self-protection. What do I need to do to stay safe? What do I need to do to make sure that my family is safe? Um, and that's just the way that we think because we feel that real danger. But as a leader, you need to be able to quickly transition from the me, me, me into we, 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 because your people are looking to you to be the leader. And now what I'm noticing when I'm talking to a lot of my clients is that they probably over the weekend have really had that cortisol come down. So while they've been pumping adrenaline and really high stress levels, getting everybody sorted and all the work sorted and furloughing people and making some really tough decisions, suddenly there's just a big pause and they get tired, they get confused, they seem to have lack of energy. Um, and it really is just all of that cortisol level just draining away to some kind of normal. So if you've been feeling that, um, that tiredness, maybe even can't be asked approach, um, don't worry, it's completely normal and you will come out the other side. So the other important message that I've been giving other leaders is you need to help yourself first before you can help others. You know, you need to recharge your batteries. You need to get really clear and calm in your mind so you can be the best that you can be. So some of you might be familiar with the DJAC model of change. It was actually introduced on the back of a grief model. Um, we noticed that actually with any change, even though it might not be the loss of somebody we love, it's the loss of an idea, a normal, um, a loss of the way that our lives used to be. And so I'm gonna talk you through this model. And as I talk, I want you to try and think about where you have been and where you are now, and then start thinking ahead about how you can shift your way through it. So the first stage that everybody goes through is denial. It's that kind of, it's not real, it won't come to Britain, um, it's only affecting the older people. Oh, I, I'm fine, I'm gonna be okay. Um, so it's la la la, it's not happening. And that's because the brain is absolutely in shock. And you know, if you're following any social media, you've probably seen you know, all of these conspiracy theories and trying to poo poo the fact that this, this really is happening. You know, the people who are saying that, oh, it's just like seasonal flu and more people die of this, that and the other every day. They were in complete denial. And you may have found yourself even, you know, going into those kind of um, conversations within your own head. Um, but it was just your brain was in shock. It hadn't caught up with what was actually happening with the real threats. Um, and when you think about the fight, flight or freeze, you, you're basically in the freeze mode. And as you start realising that, oh, actually, this might be real, this might actually be happening to me, you start then getting into emotion. So the, the first ones are generally fear. Um, you know, the world is changing, it's going out of control. You're pretty powerless at that stage. You might even turn to a bit of anger. 
And I've definitely seen some anger out there, whether it's um, having a go at somebody who's um, having a picnic in the park or somebody who's not social distancing, um, somebody who's picked up a, a can of beans and put it back in the supermarket. There's a lot of anger out there. Um, and that's just because those people are actually just in the emotion stage. Um, you might have seen it in your business as well, where certain people are demanding things or, or handling things not as, as you'd expected because they're in that emotion. And as people start shifting through that emotion, it soon turns into some kind of almost depression um, or some anxiety, a feeling of being lost or maybe even overwhelmed. Um, so after the busy doing stuff stage, we tend to almost run out of energy as your body, uh, your brain realizes that this is real, this is really happening. And you just kind of go, oh, okay. Um, so again, you might notice that you've not wanted to engage in as much social media. You might not have wanted to have as many phone calls as what you first had. You know, everybody was on house party or some kind of Zoom kind of conversations in the first couple of weeks. And now it's dying down a bit as people just relax. And then once you've processed all of your emotions, you start then going into justification mode. And that's when your brain is trying to make sense of everything. Um, so it looks for reasons, it looks for root cause, it looks for analytics, it looks for statistics. It also looks to blame others. And so again, notice the, the kind of social media or the books or the articles that you're being drawn to. Um, notice maybe even you know, the language that you're using. Are you in that blame stage? Um, so very much just notice the kind of language because all your brain is doing is trying to say, get yeah, this bit, that works, right, let's put it back together so that we can you know, create a safe house, so to speak. And once you've got your brain and it's all you know, focused and it's, it's there, it's calm now, you then shift into acceptance. And that's like, okay, this is happening. And you almost feel like your, your whole body and mind just goes, ah, and takes a deep breath. And it's that um, mental, emotional, and physical pause almost just where you're just like, okay, now I can almost smell the roses, I can hear the birds tweeting, I'm just noticing. And you become hyper aware, but it's a very different kind of energy. And then eventually you move into the change. So you get a renewed energy and you think, right, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna start thinking ahead and I'm planning what I'm gonna do this week or the next month. I can even start thinking about what the world will be like in a year's time or what I wanna create that's different. So your brain then starts going into the executive function, which is the future state. Most people that I'm dealing with at the moment and, and you know my coaching clients, they're bouncing around between emotion, justification and acceptance. Um, you know, I, I was talking to one coaching client this morning and he was saying that um, he hadn't even realized that when we all go back to work, that things would be different. He was just expecting it to just carry on as normal. We all get together and everything's the same. Um, and it was that moment of clarity where we're like, oh no, our experiences, our thoughts, everything's changed actually. Although we might come back in the same building, it will have changed. And that was him moving from denial, emotion, and justification very quickly to acceptance. So, so there's some of the things that, you know, my clients have definitely been dealing with. Um, there was another leader who I've been working with who had absolutely gone into uh, overwhelm. And as a result of that, he'd, he basically shut down and he'd stopped communicating. He'd stopped emailing his people um, because he was really, starting to come on that um, that cortisol come down. So again, just notice where you are so that you can then identify it, accept it, and then move on. Very few people are yet in the change process. Um, you may be there, uh, but just know that very few people are right now. So if you are going into blow the blue skies thinking and making plans and charging ahead, just know that some of your people may be way, way, way down the process and you need to meet them where they are. So just going into the little uh, brain again, um, as I'm talking and I just want you to focus on you and, and try and pinpoint where you are in the process. Um, in that fear state, and as you start coming out of it, um, you might have noticed that you were confused, maybe couldn't concentrate so much, 
Uh, you might even have a bit of memory loss. Believe me, I keep calling my children all different kinds of names, but none of them are their own. Um, maybe you can't even read. You've been trying to look at some data or reading a report or even reading a newspaper article and you just can't retain the information and are getting very easily distracted. And what I'm finding is these short bursts are actually far more productive, uh, which is why I said that I will talk for about half an hour and then we'll have some kind of questions because, you know, most people just can't concentrate at the moment for more than a, um, half an hour or so. And so, you know, when you're in that kind of state, you can either choose to feed it. And by feeding it, I mean reading more news, you know, constantly scrolling on social media, isolating yourself or allowing the negative thoughts to come in. Um, or you can choose to calm it so that you can then move into the executive function of your brain. So when you're in that, um, that confused, I, me, me, me stage, you might find yourself, you know, making all the decisions, um, excluding other people from decision making. You might find yourself judging people, making assumptions about other colleagues and, you know, how they're behaving or what work they're doing. Uh, you might find yourself limiting your information, withholding information because you just can't be bothered to explain it again. Um, you might try to be the superhero and be the absolute fixer or the all knowing guru who's got all the answers. But the reality is you don't because nobody has ever been in this situation before. So you can't possibly know how to handle it every time with every decision. So when you start calming it, then, you know, some techniques are things like just taking a breath. So before you get on another call or you go and meet one of your colleagues virtually, just take a few deep breaths and calm your mind before you get on there. Um, some people are finding meditation really works or journaling um, or just taking a moment to sit outside with a cup of coffee and just reflect. Uh, for me, I'm rubbish at, at meditation, um, but what I do do is when I go out for my walks, um, I'm just literally tuning into the nature and noticing, you know, what's around me. Um, and that again, it just occupies my mind with what's here right now. And as you start to calm your brain, you're then able to move into the executive function at the front of your brain. And this is where you then start being able to get those ideas. You're able to expand your knowledge. You might want to start learning and connecting again, um, discovering, celebrating successes. You start becoming a bit more optimistic and finding a route forward. Um, so it's very much more inclusive um, an outward focus. So you've probably spent a lot of time internally. Now you're able to work on a more outward focus. So really when you, so that's all about my present, where am I right now? And then you need to start focusing on myself. So being the leader within first. So noticing your feelings, noticing your thoughts, noticing the beliefs that you're still holding on to from the old world. Um, and also noticing your personality style, how that's influencing your behaviours, because some people are very gung-ho, action orientated. Some people are very much more blue skies thinkers or very logical and want to stick to the process. Um, and again, you know, in times of stress, we tend to almost overplay our personality style. But again, noticing where you are, how it's impacting you and then the impact that it has on others is all about emotional intelligence. So that's very much about understanding where you are, how you regulate your behaviours and your thoughts, um, and then being able to connect with people and showing empathy and understanding and meeting them when they are. So until you can do your bit on yourself, you're going to find it really difficult to connect with others. So the, the tips that I've been giving quite a few of my colleagues who are in overwhelm is to really just focus on three three by three priorities. So when you come down in the morning and you start in planning your day, try and work out three physical activities that you can do. Now that might be going for your daily walk or whatever you do, um, but it might be getting up and stretching um, and just moving the body so you're not just sat in one place all the time. Um, it might be yeah, getting up and dancing around the kitchen with the kids, you know, whatever it is, but you need to keep your body moving to keep your energy levels up. You need to focus on some um, emotional, 
needs as well. So that might be, again, meditating, journaling, but it's very much about also being able to articulate to people that you trust about how you're feeling, what you're going through, what your thought processes are, um, rather than staying in your own brain. Try and then start reaching out to others. And then with the mental activities, yes, I, I do mean mental health, but I also mean those mental activities that you you're going to be able to really apply your, your mind matter to. So it might be that report, it might be holding that team meeting, it might be creating a new product or designing something. Um, but don't overburden the brain. Um, so if you've got one massive project, just keep that as one mental activity. But if you can build in three and tick them off, you're going to feel good about the day. But what I tend to see people do is they over plan what they can actually do in a day. And then at the end of the day, they end up just feeling stressed uh, because they haven't done it. And um, waking up at four o'clock in the morning with another list of all the things that they're going to do. So just notice, you know, slow down, check your sleep, um, create some thinking space for you. Um, so you, you're calming your mind down so you can be clear and concise. Uh, reflect on what's actually gone well and what hasn't gone well. Uh, so that you can then build that into your future business. So when you start thinking about building the new normal, um, what are you going to decide to keep and what are you going to let go of? Um, talk to people. Uh, if you haven't got a trusted group, uh, but if your team or you know you haven't got any colleagues that you really trust, um, then absolutely get a mentor, or get a coach. Um, I'm sure there's plenty around at the moment who have got time on their hands. Um, but yeah, if you haven't got that trusted team, then start thinking about actually, what do I need to do to build that trusted team around me when we get back to some kind of normality? Be kind to yourself as well. Um, you know, if you're not, you know, forgiving yourself, maybe making the wrong decisions or maybe being a bit flippant with somebody or, um, you know, just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, um, that's okay. Because like I said, we've never been in this situation before. You're not supposed to know all the answers. So if you get things wrong or you slip up, that's okay. Just be kind. Again, working in short bursts really will help you, um, you know, and in between each one of those bursts, get up and move around, make yourself a drink, go outside, whatever. Um, but you need to reset your brain at each stage and then really do connect with, you know, yourself, connect with people. And if there's one thing that I would love you to do over the next month or two as you go through this process Try and reconnect with your purpose about why you decided to work in this business or why you decided to become the leader. There's some kind of purpose there um, because then if you, you can reconnect with why you're, why you're the person leading right now, why you are the best place person to do it and then be able to communicate that with so much more clarity and it gives you that inner motivation and draws you know, like-minded people to you. So. So if you haven't done that work and, you know, I'm happy to help you do that and reconnect, but yeah, definitely go back and reflect on your bigger purpose. So then we come on to the team. So let's just assume you've done all that self work. You understand where you are. You're then able to really lead your team better. Um, you're able to not just, you know, lead your, your peers, your number one team, your leadership team, but also the people that work you know for you and within your organization and that clarity and that calmness of your your mind means that you're able to communicate with them with more sincerity more trust more concise messaging um, and create that level of safety for them um, so i want you to meet also people where they are so just because an 8 a.m. meeting every morning is going to be perfect for you, it doesn't naturally mean that it will be for your customers, your suppliers, your, your team. So again, check in with people and ask them what works well for you. So don't assume you have all the answers. And there's probably four kinds of meetings that you should be having right now. So the first one is a bit of a social hangout. Um, you might be doing this already, but you know, think about it when you're in work and you're seeing people on a daily basis, you have all kinds of social kind of conversations. You ask them about what did they watch on Netflix yesterday? What did they do at the weekend? Um, you know, what they got planned this weekend. So try and still have those kind of social conversations because that's where you actually find out far more about people and what's going on in their world and their mind um, and builds those relationships. So check in with people socially. Then you still need those daily check ins. Um, and like I said before you do them, take those deep breaths, clear the mind, 
Um, but those daily check-ins are really about, you know, who's doing what, what, what have been the wins, what's, what are people struggling with, what help do they need from you? And at the end of those calls, and maybe even just half an hour calls, um, just be clear on who is doing what by when. And that's the whole purpose of those. And then you might start looking at the more weekly tactical. So what's coming up next week? What do we need to be focusing on? Okay, um, who's doing that? You know, what time frame? And so you really start thinking more a bit longer term and making sure that everybody on the team knows what they're doing. And then eventually it's going to start getting into the more strategic conversations. Um, so as people get through to the change um, part of the change cycle, they're starting to think ahead. So notice when you're in that stage, you know, somebody might bring a problem in one of the uh, weekly tacticals and it's a really big meeting one. You'd say, part that, we're going to pick that up in a separate session just for that topic. And then you can start thinking about all the building blocks for the future. So they're the kind of meetings you should be having. But again, you just make sure that you're arranging them around other people's needs, um, you know, because they're going to have all kinds of family chaos going on. Um, and other things, you know, some people are morning people, some are afternoon and evening, it's okay, but I'm sure you'll be able to find the right time. But in all of your communication, you need to be really clear about what, what the objective is, what you're trying to say, um, and be consistent. Be empathetic. So if people are struggling, just say, I hear you, I, I get what you mean, I understand where you're coming from, because you can activate that um, that human function of your brain now and that's where empathy lies it's not sympathy like oh poor you oh I feel terrible for you no that just makes people spiral it's just about meeting them saying I, I get you I hear you I understand and then again be concise with your messaging so there's no ambiguity follow up by email if necessary but at the end of every contact with your team leave on a high there's always some good news that you can pass on to them um, whether it's a success that you've had, whether it's just celebrating the day, sharing a funny joke, something just to keep people upbeat, like they feel like the, the session's been worthwhile. And casting your mind forward, maybe a month, maybe six months from now, I don't know when we're all going to be able to get back together again. But I want you to start preparing for that almost and start thinking about, right, okay, how do, I, how do I reset the team or the business? You know, um, how do I then reinvent what we're doing? So what has gone well? What do you want to keep hold of? What do you want to do differently? Who were those rising stars who really showed up with all the right behaviours and attitudes? What do I want to do with them? Um, and then start thinking about how you're going to reintegrate the team. So just know that, you know, if people have been away from each other for two or three months, that first time they're all back in the office or coming together, um, it's going to be a bit strange. So you're going to start thinking about going through that forming, storming, norming and performing again. Um, and so don't expect everything to be back to normal. People are going to want to talk. They're going to want to connect. They're going to want to share experiences because it's different doing it in, in person. And they're going to want to hear your experience too. So you need to share your journey about what you've been through, um, you know, and be that vulnerable, you, you know, I don't want you to tell them that you've been arguing with your other half every five minutes, um, but I do want you to share that, yeah, it was a challenge or I picked up my love for painting again or photography or whatever it is, but, you know, be, be one of the team. And a really great tool that you can use is the team charter to give you that kind of structure. Um, so you can download it off my website or just Google Team Charter and it gives you a really good framework about some of the conversations that can really help move you from forming and storming and right the way through the other process. And then the final piece that I want you to think about um, when you're doing this self-reflection and getting people through change is what's your legacy? So your leadership legacy. What do you want to be remembered for? And you know, I, I really do predict that in the future candidates, when they come for job interviews, you know, their question will be, how did you treat people during the crisis? How did your business adapt and change during the crisis? Because how you lead now and how you're showing up and the decisions you're making will absolutely be your legacy. And already we're seeing business leaders being praised and other ones being vilified for the way that they've shown up during this crisis. Um, so I really want you to start thinking about, you know, how do you want to be remembered? So some of the things that you can start thinking about for your future 
um, and these are in those like calm moments. Um, you now, again, connect with what's your business purpose and, and the vision that you have for the business uh, or the team. Um, you know, have you got any rising talent that's coming up that you've identified and how can you really create that continuity? So if, if something did happen like this, whether it was floods or um, power cuts or another pandemic, whatever it is, have you got the right people to be able to get you through the next crisis? How can you start developing them now? Did you have the right systems and processes in place? Um, were you investing in the right assets to be able to get you through this? Or were you scrambling around at the last minute to try and get everybody set up? So what, what worked well, what didn't work well? So how can you build that into future proofing? Look at your finances as well. Um, you know, really good business practices to keep at least six months cash buffer in your bank accounts so that you can cover suppliers and um, you know, wages and keep the, the lights on, so to speak. Um, we've started to see quite a few businesses haven't got that buffer and that's why they're really in crisis at the moment. Um, so when you think about it for the future, what can you do to make sure you've got six to 12 months, the finances are healthy and that you're spending in the right way? And then the final bit is that corporate social responsibility. Now it was becoming a thing before because it's very much a millennial mindset piece. But now we've started seeing the, you know, the, the air is getting clearer, the um, pollution is reducing, how some people are being helpers uh, towards the NHS or the most vulnerable. And you as a business and what you give back and how you act on a more global, you know, community-based impact um, is going to be part of your legacy. So again, you don't need to be thinking about, you know, making definitive actions now, but as you're doing your your calming of your brain, allow some of these thoughts to, to come forward and start envisioning a future. So in terms of how I or uh, other people can serve, uh, serve you, then of course I'm here for coaching calls or connection calls, just have a chat, a, a coffee. Um, but in the medium, I want you to start thinking about um, how can I create that team impact, even though we're, we might be remotely or you might have some working different shifts, um, how can you bring people together to really bond them and join them together and start reflecting on what's gone well and what hasn't gone well and how can you make sure that it's fixed for the future and then on that long term really start focusing on um, that reset reinvent and reintegrate your teams maybe look at those team charters perhaps you need to create a new vision and mission to really galvanize people behind a new cause um, and maybe start thinking about the values that you've actually seen people behave with, show up, that, that are actually, you know, you want to be long-term and enduring, so taking the best of it. So I'm going to stop the share. Oh, by the way, it's lucy at 3wh.uk.com if you want to get in contact. So with that in mind, that was my little stop tour. Try to keep it brief, um, but just any comments or questions? Just to allow everybody um, a bit of time to type out any questions in the chat, if anyone's got any. Um, Debbie did just ask if we could send out the presentation to everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so um, if everyone's happy to receive that as well, um, once we've kind of come out of here, um, Lucy can send that across to us and we can send it across to you guys so you've got that to refer back to. Um, does anyone have any questions for Lucy or any comments? Anything you might need a bit of advice on? Any stories to share? Just in the meantime, then, if anyone's got anything, put it in the group chat. I just always like to give everyone a little minute to type it out. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for, for sharing all of that, Lucy. I, I do find the chain cycle really, really interesting. It's funny when you're reading through it, isn't it? What you what you kind of go towards and think, yeah, that was definitely me during that point. I totally understand what that what that bit refers to and how I behaved in that way. Um, so thank you so much for sharing all of that, Lucy. Really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go with that there isn't any questions. Um, so I think everyone would have done that by now. If anyone does have um, any questions that they think of a little bit later down the line, or if anyone does want to be put in touch with Lucy at all, I have put an email address in the group chat, which is our um, Chamber Events email address. If you think of any questions or you want to ask Lucy's advice about anything, send us an email and we will put you in touch with Lucy. Um, and just before we go as well, I did just want to point you towards another seminar that we're doing tomorrow, 
um, which is our HR seminar with our employment law specialist from MFG Solicitors. Um, she will be covering things such as furlough, um, very interesting topic at the moment that I know a lot of businesses need information about. So if you or anybody in your organisation would like to book onto that, then have a look on the website. Um, just having a look at some of the comments. Yeah, just lots of thank yous, Lucy. So a massive oh, awesome. thank, you. thank you from me as well. Um, I found that really useful. I'm sure everybody else did too. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining. It's lovely to see you all. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, take thank care, you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks, bye.